Among the Time Machine by H.G. Wells. Epilogue. One cannot choose but wonder, will he ever return? It may be that he swept back into the past and fell among the blood-drinking hairy savages of the age of unpolished stone, into the abysses of the Cretaceous Sea, or among the grotesque Saurians, the huge reptilian brutes of the Jurassic times. He may even now, if I may use the phrase, be wandering on some plesiosaurus-haunted eolithic coral reef, or beside the lonely saline lakes of the Triassic Age? Or did he go forward into one of the nearer ages in which men are still men, but with the riddles of our own time answered and its wearisome problems solved? Into the manhood of the race? For I, for my own part, cannot think that these latter days of weak experiment, fragmentary theory, and mutual discord are indeed man's culminating time. I say for my own part, he, I know, for the question had been discussed among us before the time machine was made, thought but cheerlessly of the advancement of mankind, and saw in the growing pile of civilization only a foolish heaping that must inevitably fall back upon and destroy its makers in the end. If that is so, it remains for us to live as though it were not so. But to me, the future is still black, and blank is a vast ignorance, lit at a few casual places by the memory of his story. And I have by me, for my comfort, two strange white flowers shriveled now, and browned and flat and brittle, to witness that even when mind and strength had gone, gratitude and mutual tenderness still lived on in the heart of man. The End <laughs>